Salvador Dali, a master of 20th century art, is renowned for his role in the Surrealist movement and stands out for his exceptional versatility and prolific output. More than just a painter, Dali's career encompassed a wide range of artistic fields. He ventured into sculpture, printmaking, and even delved into fashion and advertising. Additionally, his creativity extended to writing and filmmaking, highlighted by notable collaborations with Louis Bouillot and Alfred Hitchcock. Dali was not just celebrated for his artistic skills, but also for his flamboyant personality and tendency to be a playful provocateur. His early works show the influence of fellow Spanish artists like Pablo Picasso and Joan Miro, particularly evident in the use of organic shapes and forms. Over time, his style evolved, displaying a keen interest in classical and Renaissance art, evident in his hyper-realistic style and the use of religious symbolism in his later paintings. Salvador Dali's unique blend of wide-ranging artistic pursuits and a distinct personal style has firmly established him as an iconic figure in the art world. In this video, we will explore the art progression of Salvador Dali, tracing the journey of this iconic artist's evolving style and diverse artistic contributions. Dali, by the age of 24, had not only completed his art education, but had also been profoundly inspired by Pablo Picasso. This inspiration led him to develop his own unique interpretation of Cubism, a significant stepping stone in his artistic journey. During this formative period, Dali began to intertwine surrealist concepts into his paintings, marking the beginning of his foray into a style that would soon become synonymous with his name. It was in this creative milieu that Dali embarked on a collaborative venture with the film director Louis Bunuel. Together, they created a film that was a radical departure from the traditional narrative cinema. Their creation, steeped in dream logic and characterized by non-sequential scenes, eschewed a conventional plotline. Instead, it embraced Freudian principles of free association, offering viewers an experience far removed from the narrative norms of the time. Their film, Unshean Andalou, emerged as an ethereal cinematic experience, defying traditional storytelling methods. It was structured as a montage of clips, each designed to disrupt the viewer's sense of reality and delve into the unconscious mind. This approach was epitomized in one of the film's most jarring scenes. A glaring cow's eye is seen in place of a woman's eye socket, a visual that evokes profound discomfort. This is followed by a shocking sequence where a razor blade slashes the eye in an extreme close-up, further unsettling the viewer. Unshean Andalou quickly rose to fame, becoming a sensation in the world of cinema. Its impact was significant, not only earning Dali a place among the elite group of Parisian artists, known as the Surrealists, but also cementing the film's status as the first Surrealist film. To this day, this short film holds a revered place in the realm of experimental cinema, continuing to be regarded as a paramount example of the genre. In this intricate painting, a large distorted human face dominates the canvas, gazing down upon a landscape. This imposing figure likely represents Salvador Dali's own perspective or presence, a central figure that ties the surreal elements together. The backdrop of the painting is a rocky shoreline, reminiscent of the rugged terrain of Catalonia, Dali's homeland. This choice of setting suggests a personal touch, anchoring the fantastical elements in the reality of Dali's experiences and surroundings. A striking feature of the piece is the representation of Gala, Dali's muse and wife. Emerging from the head of the central figure, Gala appears as a nude female form. Her depiction is deeply symbolic, embodying the kind of fantasy a man might conjure, aligning with the provocative theme suggested by the painting's title. 
The sexual imagery is further intensified by the positioning of Gala's mouth near a male's crotch, hinting at impending fellatio. In a stark contrast, the male figure is portrayed as being cut at the knees and bleeding, a powerful metaphor for stifled sexuality. The painting is rich with recurring motifs that hold deeper meanings in Dali's over. A grasshopper, for instance, is a symbol of sexual anxiety, a theme that frequently appears in Dali's work. Ants, another recurring element, are used to represent decay and death. An egg is also present, symbolizing fertility and perhaps the potential for new life amidst the chaos. The artwork reflects the tumultuous inner world of Dali, particularly his conflicted attitudes towards sexual intercourse. This conflict is rooted in a deep-seated phobia of female genitalia, a fear that was instilled in Dali during his childhood when his father exposed him to graphic photographs illustrating the horrific effects of venereal diseases. This traumatic experience had a lasting impact on Dali, shaping his perceptions of sex as intertwined with morbidity and decay. Dali's complex relationship with Gela also plays a crucial role in the interpretation of the painting. It's believed that Dali was a virgin when he met Gala, and that he later encouraged her to engage in affairs to satisfy her sexual needs, a testament to his complicated feelings towards physical intimacy. In his later life, Dali's artistic focus underwent a significant shift. He began to explore religious and philosophical themes, advocating chastity as a pathway to spirituality. This evolution in his thought and work marks a stark departure from the themes of sexuality and desire that dominated his earlier pieces. The painting is often compared to Hieronymus Bosch's The Garden of Earthly Delights, highlighting parallels in their exploration of human desires and moral themes. Overall, Dali's painting is a complex tapestry, weaving together his personal fears, experiences, and evolving attitudes towards sexuality and spirituality, creating a surreal and thought-provoking masterpiece. This iconic painting masterfully blends the surreal with the familiar, creating a striking tableau that has captured the imagination of art enthusiasts around the world. At the heart of this work is the mesmerizing depiction of melting watches, a powerful visual metaphor for the fluidity and elusive nature of time. Dali's inspiration for this surreal portrayal came from an unusual source, the sight of camembert cheese melting under the sun's relentless gaze. This choice of imagery reflects his unique ability to find deep, surreal meanings in the mundane. In this painting, Dali skillfully juxtaposes hard and soft objects, challenging the viewer's perceptions of reality. This contrast is a deliberate artistic choice, showcasing his desire to invert the intrinsic characteristics of objects, making the hard appear soft and vice versa. This technique is emblematic of Dali's work, where he often delved into the world of dreams, bringing to life the bizarre and the unreal in vivid, startling detail. Adding to the painting's rich symbolism is the presence of a swarm of ants eagerly congregating around the melting watches. These ants are more than mere details. They represent the natural processes of decay and putrefaction, themes that held a deep and unshakable fascination for Dali. The presence of the ants adds a layer of complexity to the painting, intertwining themes of time, decay, and the inexorable processes of nature. In the center of this surreal landscape is a figure that bears a striking resemblance to Dali himself, portrayed as if melting into the surrounding environment. This self-representation has led many to interpret the painting as a reflection on Dali's own thoughts about immortality, set against the rugged and timeless backdrop of the rocky cliffs of Catalonia, his homeland. This introspective element adds a deeply personal dimension to the painting, inviting viewers to ponder not just the broader themes of time and reality, but also the artist's own relationship with these eternal concepts. Dali, 
a master of surrealism, often reflected upon a childhood memory that profoundly influenced his artistic trajectory. This recollection centered around a reproduction of Jean Francois de Millet's 1859 masterpiece, The Angelus, which he frequently gazed upon during the long hours at school. The original painting, a classical piece, captures a poignant moment of two farmers engaged in a devotional prayer, their day's labor concluded by the distant chime of a dinner bell. In a creative homage to Millet's work, Dali reimagined this scene through the lens of surrealism, infusing it with his unique interpretation and deep-seated themes. He transformed the human characters into two curvaceous rock figures, a male and a female, symbolizing the robust and mystical landscape of Catalonia, his homeland. The female figure on the left is particularly striking, resembling the form of a praying mantis. This choice is far from arbitrary. In surrealism, the praying mantis represents a complex interplay of attraction and despair within the realm of desire, a theme that resonated deeply with Dali. The praying mantis, a creature where the female is known for cannibalizing the male post-mating, becomes a potent symbol in Dali's interpretation of the Angelus. He perceived the original painting as an allegory for the repression of the male by the female, a theme that he believed underpinned the dynamic between the figures in Millet's work. This interpretation imbued the painting with a sense of sexual tension and an ominous undercurrent, reflecting Dali's view of the female as not only the dominant partner, but also as a sexual threat to male existence. Dali's fascination with this theme was not confined to a single work. Throughout his career, he revisited the imagery of the male and female forms, reminiscent of the praying mantis in numerous creations. These recurring motifs in Dali's oeuvre highlight his enduring engagement with the themes of gender dynamics, desire, and the complex interplay of power within relationships, all encapsulated in his unique surrealist perspective. Before the Spanish Civil War, Salvador Dali painted a work that he believed showed the predictive power of his subconscious mind. This painting is like a forewarning of the violence, fear, and sadness that came with General Franco's rule in Spain. It captures the widespread worry of a country facing great troubles. At the center of Dali's painting are two very distorted figures in a fierce and intense fight. These figures, locked in a harsh and never-ending battle, show a scene of disorder and conflict with no clear winner. Dali himself called this scene a huge human body turning into monstrous, fighting parts of arms and legs, a picture of extreme desperation. This intensity reflects the internal and external struggles Spain was experiencing. An important part of the painting is its title, which mentions a boiled bean. This is a small hint to the tough conditions many Spanish people faced then. This simple food, common among the poor, symbolizes the widespread difficulties and suffering of those times. Through this detail, Dali links the frightening image in his painting to the real hardships of war and poverty. Dali's interest in political themes continued beyond this painting. He explored politics and war, especially in works about Adolf Hitler and his agreement with Lord Chamberlain of Britain. This puts Dali among artists who use their work to talk about and criticize political events. Dali's painting is a strong artistic reaction to the violence and chaos of its time, showing how the artist saw the world events around him. Dali's Lobster Telephone is a well-known piece in the surrealist art movement. It showcases a unique mix of two unrelated items, a telephone and a lobster. This mix is a common feature in surrealist and Dada art. The artwork combines a regular telephone, which we usually hold close to our ear, with a large lobster that has sharp claws. Interestingly, the lobster's genitalia are placed where the phone's mouthpiece is. This unusual combination creates a dreamlike and startling effect, 
making the viewer feel a bit unsettled. Edward James, a fan of Dali's work, asked for the lobster telephone to be made. He ordered four of these for his house. He also commissioned another piece from Dali, the Mae West's Lips Sofa. This sofa is shaped like a big pair of lips and sitting on it suggests sexual themes. Both of these works by Dali are examples of how everyday objects can be transformed into something surprising and thought-provoking in surrealist art. Salvador Dali, known for his striking and imaginative art, had an interesting journey as a student and artist. In his early years, Dali wasn't particularly good at academics, especially in mathematics. However, his interest took a dramatic turn following the use of nuclear bombs in Japan. This event sparked a deep fascination in Dali for atomic theory and related scientific topics. This newfound interest marked a significant shift in Dali's artistic style. He began to revisit classical techniques, blending them with modern concepts. It was during this period that he developed what he called nuclear mysticism. This unique approach to art combined elements of his lifelong passions, Catholicism and Catalan culture, with his recent explorations in math and science. One of Dali's most notable interests was in representing the fourth dimension in his art. A prime example is his innovative use of the tesseract, or hypercube, in his works. The tesseract, a representation of a four-dimensional cube in a three-dimensional space, showcased Dali's fascination with complex spatial concepts. To deepen his understanding of these ideas, he collaborated with Professor Thomas Bancoff, a mathematician from Brown University. Dali's personal life and beliefs also played a significant role in his art. He had a complex relationship with religion, particularly Catholicism. While he acknowledged the existence of God based on mathematical and scientific evidence, he personally struggled with faith. This inner conflict and his interest in spatial mathematics were intricately woven into his artworks. His painting Christ of St. John of the Cross, 1951, which integrates divine mathematics, is a testament to this blend and is celebrated as one of the greatest religious paintings of the 20th century. Dali's journey from a struggling student to an artist who seamlessly blended science, religion and art is a remarkable aspect of his legacy. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Your support helps me create more videos like this. Thank you.